I'm your host, Bill Jordan. Art with Bill is about helping artists get known, promote their work. If you're a sculptor, a painter, or a candlestick maker, this is the right place for you. With that in mind, we're going to have another conversation with our friend, Stacy Torres, all the way from Newcastle, Illinois, by the way of New York City. Hi, Stacy. How are you doing today? Indiana. Oh, Indiana? <laughs> I'm good. Okay, we'll get it together one day. Yeah. <laughs> so you do okay? Thank you. How's the weather out there in Newcastle, Indiana? Bitter cold. Bitter cold. All right. And so nothing just talk about yeah. the weather. Let's talk about you, your upcoming show. Where's that gonna be? Uh, at the Janice Mason Art Museum in Cadiz, Kentucky. Cadiz, Kentucky. Um, Kentucky? January yeah. C A D I Z, they pronounce it Cadiz, like the city in Spain. And it is it runs from January fifth through February twenty fifth. Oh and okay. opening reception on January fourteenth. Okay, so tell me how are you gonna fly out there? How's that gonna go? Well, from where I live it's about a five and a half hour drive normally. So I'll probably they're coming to pick up my work actually tomorrow. They're sending a team up to pick up the paintings and um, I probably will just be there for the reception on the 14th. Yes. So I can probably drive down depending on the weather, most likely not. <laughs> but I could, if push comes to shove, I can fly down to Paducah or um, who knows, <laughs> find a way somehow. Dog sled. All right. So, so now, how many pieces are going to be in the show? Well, first of all, how did you get into this museum? Um, they discovered me uh, basically through a hashtag. They um, were seeking artists for their 2017 season to exhibit. And from what they told me, they were looking for artists from the state of Indiana or in the Midwest. And I think they Googled Indiana artists. And that's a hashtag that I use on a regular basis. They found me and uh, saw my art. I'm not sure what site they saw it on. Possibly Facebook um, or could have been a number of places. I'm online a lot of places. And they contacted me and asked me would I be interested in doing um, a show in January and February. Well, wow. How did that feel? I said yes. I was blown away. Uh, I, it's still very surreal to me when I hear people, you know, compliment me on my art and whatnot. It's still kind of, it doesn't click. It's, I'm like, what are they talking about? Who do they, you know, who do they mean? Uh, so it's a very good feeling. Um, it's an honor. It's been a huge, huge undertaking for me uh, doing this on my own, having zero experience. Um, I, I just hope it goes over well. I, I mean, I know it will, but it was a learning experience. And if I had to do it again, I would prefer maybe if I had a year and a whole lot of revenue to pull it through. But and how I'm going to show my art. How many pieces are you going to be showing? 70. 70 pieces. Wow. Well, without further ado, I know you're a busy person. You still have to get some work done. Is that, isn't that right? I'm not, at this point, I'm just cataloging and wrapping, and I'm not sure what time they're coming tomorrow because we're expecting another snowstorm and rain tonight. So I'm just trying to get them secure the best that I can. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Whatever, you know, we need to do. Um, okay. I work at home, so it's not like I gotta rush out and do something, you know. Of course. Well, let's let's I just won't. go back through and see what we can see. Okay. Are you kidding me? No way. Here we go. This is the first image here. Yes. Um, this one's very important to me, very special to me. It's called Allison's Goldfish. And Allison is my first cousin. We basically grew up together. We're exceedingly close. 
closest thing to a sister I'll ever have. And growing up in Queens, New York, in her backyard, there was a fish pond, which, you know, a lot of people have them now, but this was back in the 50s and early 60s, and it was just a unique thing. And uh, there were these huge, huge goldfish. They weren't koi, they were goldfish that would freeze over in the winter and wake up in the spring. Mm -hmm. And we, she and I used to play back there and get in trouble for being close to the water. And so that's a tribute to my cousin, Allison. This is called Allison, okay. And, and how old were you at this time? Allison's goldfish. Um, I was probably five or six and she, she would have been two going on three. We, we were young. She's three years younger than I am. Okay. All right. That, they still live in the house, but the fish pond is gone. Yeah. Well, you know how fish ponds go. They come and they go. Yeah, I think, I think my aunt covered it up over the years, you know, maintenance. All right, so you, you want to move on to the next? That's a sweet man. Okay. Pardon? Oh. Ah. Well, tell us about this piece here. This is called Eve, and she's in the garden. Um, Eve is mature. Uh, she survived, and um, it, she represents a lot of women in, in my age group or friends that I have who have come through so much, and we still walk the rose path. Uh, one of my mottos is keep walking. People don't know what it means, and I, I use it as a tagline. I just always say keep walking, and it means keep walking towards your destiny, and only you can walk that path, and that's what Eve is about. Oh. A woman of a certain age, living life, and making the best and seeing beauty in where others don't see it. Oh, okay. That's what we should be doing. That's, that's wonderful. I like that. Yeah, she's done with India Ink. I'm sorry, India Ink? Okay. All right, yes. I just like the textures, the warmth, the colors, and her definite, her attitude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I think I, t and, and actually, um, when I did it, it came out looking like a good friend of mine who's uh, Lena Cole Dennis out in Los Angeles. Oh. And Lena saw it and fell in love. So I sent her a, a print of it. But it looks just like her. Oh. Um, and she lives that life. Okay. All right, so we'll go on to the next one. This is Fever. It's called Fever. And... I did it during Black History Month. I did a challenge. I made myself a challenge to do one painting a day for 29 days this year. This was one of them. And Fever is a blues singer, and she actually does represent another good friend of mine, uh, Trish Crow, who um, lived here in Newcastle for many years, and we're close friends. She's now in um, on the East Coast, but she's a blues singer. and. She sang from the depths, the deepest depths of her soul. She sang from hell and back. I should say past and she still does. Uh -huh. um, and, but it's not exactly her, but she was my influence. So this is called Fever, which was oh. her, one of her theme songs. Ooh. Very nice. It is one of her theme songs. <laughs> I speak in past tense because of her living here and not being here now. Right. Where, where does she live now? D.C. Okay, is she still singing? Oh, yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. I This piece here is very intriguing. Mm -hmm. Could you give this, I mean, what is it all about? This is called Home of the Brave. And I was in an exhibit, a group exhibit, a few months ago um, to benefit the homeless in Indiana. We were challenged to paint what homelessness means to us, whether we have experienced it or not. And I, I remember, I, you know, you see homelessness all over the country, not just in the cities, 
they're in the suburbs, they're in the country. Um, trust me on that. You know, I mean, there I've seen people in open fields in a school bus. And I remember a woman in Indianapolis many years ago who was homeless, and the only giveaway she had was her luggage that she always had with her. She had a little dog, but she kept herself well. Um, she didn't beg for money. She begged for toiletries. And I, I remember seeing her one evening in a park. There were homes nearby, and, and they were upscale homes. And everyone snug in their house, you know, having their dinner and enjoying each other. And they're warm and they're comfortable. And there she was with her blanket. And it's this is a country that there's no excuse for homelessness for anyone at this anymore whether it be veterans, seniors, men, women, the majority of homeless in this country happen to be children. Really? And, um, I didn't know that. This was, well, when you think, I mean, in the shelters, you have a lot of mothers or you have a lot of families. And these people most often have jobs. They just don't make enough to live a decent, comfortable life with dignity. And that's all they want. But there are a lot of children. And I learned that years ago, uh, selling real estate in, in Indianapolis, there was a charity, a big, I believe it was called Genesaret. I can't remember the name, the pronunciation, but it's out of the Bible. They were basically like Samaritans, and they were a group of dentists who had a mobile unit, and they would go around the city to the homeless and... Uh, give them dental care and a lot of them were children because they and you know they're in school they right. you know you don't always know um, they're living a, they're functioning but they don't have a home so this was my one of my pieces i did too and this is one of them it's one of my favorite yes and that's why she has the red white and blue quilt. i can quilt. see that oh yes <laughs> little, little paradox right Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Tell me about this piece. This is Queen Anne. And I did her New Year's Eve uh, 2014 going into 2015. I was home alone and I decided I wanted to bring in the New Year painting. And Queen Anne is uh, it's actually an acrylic painting on canvas, but... Um, it's mixed media. It's a collage. Those, her, her um, shawl and panky and whatnot were doilies and things that belonged to my grandmother and my yes. aunt. And she's a woman of a certain generation and time period where women of color, very strong women, proud, um, lived their lives with total digni dignity, regardless of their situation. And this is who she represents. I mean, she could have been a former slave. She could have been a housekeeper. She could have been an educator. She could be anyone. But I, I thought of my mother when she passed last year, all the things that she had been in her life, and she went through Alzheimer's, and it completely altered both our lives. But there was so much pride to the very end because of who she was and that's who Queen Anne is um, she was a fun piece to do she's um, acrylic um, canvas textile paper there's some jewels um, silk flowers I use a little bit of everything that yes. things that meant mean something to mature women today I and mean, you know they we hold on to stuff <laughs> okay I, myself included <laughs> yes but this is a beautiful piece I, I, I'm very happy that you did thank you yeah she's I love her what's going on with this piece um, you, you skipped one but this is fine this is called Red Slippers, and you, you jumped over. 
unless it came up. That's okay. This is fine. It's called red slippers. And um, it really doesn't have a story. <laughs> I do a lot of similar scenes. I like to do women in outdoor garden settings, preferably near their home. Um, and this one I did around September. And I thought about I did a series earlier in the summer called Summer Goddesses, and they were women um, selling produce from roadside stands or their flowers and uh, things that are natural and organic to them. And this lady here, she doesn't even have a name, um, had sold all her stuff. And like I said, it's the end of the summer, and she's sitting on her produce stand just satisfied with the season and she's relaxing and enjoying life and evening comes and the evening represents a new season coming oh okay now, i like this is very not all i know I, I like this piece very nice yeah it was fun doing this one also yes happy okay and this one is called Serenade. Uh, it, it didn't begin this way, but it also kind of resembles my friend Trish Crow, once again, the one that sings. But when I did this painting, it had nothing to do with the, the woman. I, I was about to do a juried paint out for the Indianapolis Zoo. And I, they selected 15 artists in the state of Indiana to go to the zoo for one day and paint animals or scenery and different things. And I had it in my head the whole time that I was going to paint a flamingo because I adore flamingos. So mm -hmm. this was really a practice piece. And um, lo and behold, when I got there, I didn't get to do the flamingo. <laughs> I ended up doing a red panda, which I loved much, much more than the flamingos anyway, but this was a practice piece. And I put the lady there with her mandolin in the moonlight and the two of them are just singing to each other and don't ask why, that's just kind of a <laughs> wacky well, Stacy thing. It's just yeah. very, it's very nice, very lyrical and very Stacy. Thank you, I also, I, I have a little series what I call the guitar girls, and they're women with uh, playing guitars. You hear that outside? It's I have no control over that. It's the garbage truck. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Here right, we go to the next one. Hear it. Uh, this is called the pink stucco porch, and. This was also done with a purpose. Um, I was in a contest um, to design a wine label. And they gave us a theme. And the theme was um, your neighborhood or all American neighborhood kind of thing. I can't remember exactly. But my neighborhood in my mind is not like the neighborhood I live in or I have fantasy environments that I coexist in and that's what I paint from and I just thought of being on you know I love stucco houses I like pink um I told you before color is extremely important to me and so I made this um, she's actually sitting on a swing a porch swing but it's kind of hard to tell and it's just a lady that once again she's got a mandolin which I love to do hmm. she's got her red white and blue uh, flag pillow her parrot a bird and it's just a nice environment and in her neighborhood this is where she dwells and so that's her all-american neighborhood could be anywhere could be in the inner city, could be rural, suburban, 
Caribbean. <laughs> it's, a, um, it's a very beautiful piece. Like you say, you can be anywhere you want to be with this right. piece. Yeah, and this is also done with ink, India ink. I use these inks that are, they're India inks, which are, they're permanent, but they're in very pigmented colors. And mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite mediums to use. Yes, it's very nice. I love it. Thank you. Uh, I did this one for an exhibit that I actually should be hanging right now, but I backed out of it at the last minute because I was physically and mentally just burned out. The painting was ready. I just didn't feel like taking it. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you just have to say no. Um, it was a women's art show in Indianapolis, and the theme for this one was um, Hearth and Home. And it seems to be a running theme this year, but um, you painted your or created your interpretation of what home means to you, or not necessarily your own home. But I thought about um, this mother and daughter. The, the name of the painting is called The Redis thread oh, okay. and my grandparents both my grandparents father grandfather and grandmother taught me to sew when i was probably five years old okay they were masters I, she was a very popular seamstress and he was a master tailor oh they painted i mean they they created clothing and designed from the 20s even during the depression, when the, in, during the depression, they sold their sewing machines to huh. raise their kids they, wow. you know, for money. And so they would sew by hand. Everything was, and he made tuxedos. Um, my grandmother did weddings, wedding parties for dignitaries in Toronto. And they would do it by hand until they got out of the depression and made enough money to repurchase their you know equipment right they taught me to sew by hand and i had a sewing business too back in the 80s for a little while uh -huh. that was comical but, <laughs> um but this is the bonding of a mother and daughter or grandmother or any relative or elder mentor um, teaching her how to quilt and when i worked with colors my grandmother would always tell me use the reddest thread so i could see what i'm doing and if i made a mistake i can see to take it out oh I see. and also it was a signature yeah i i don't do that now but it was it was kind of a signature piece it had to do with me being little and learning to hold the needle and see what i'm doing and you know you better believe if it wasn't right she ripped it out and i had to do <laughs> it again. and i just kind of liked you know they're in a very simple little environment but it's just the closeness of home and the quilt is like lineage for the family. Um, and the cardinal outside, it's, it's a personal symbolic thing for me. I put them in a lot of my paintings. Why is that? I have some cardinals outside. Why do you? Um, my family thinks of, and I think I've heard other people say also, um, Cardinals are very symbolic of ancestors. And um, I first learned this when I was about 13 years old. My, I had an uncle I was very close to who passed away. And my grandmother, we kept seeing a cardinal and it was at Christmas. And I was home visiting them in New York when this happened. And there was a cardinal in our backyard, <coughs> excuse me. And we kept seeing him, and she kept telling me it was my Uncle Art, and uh, because he had a car that was red, and I'm thinking, what in the world? What the hell does that mean? You know? uh -huh. But she believed that, that the Cardinals, yeah, Cardinals represented our lost loved ones, and he hung around there for days and days, and then he was gone. Mm -hmm. I didn't think any more of that until when my grandfather passed, and... Um, my grandmother moved to Indiana with my aunt, and every time she saw a cardinal, she swore it was my grandfather. And I, you know, cardinal is Indiana state bird. I didn't have the heart to tell her. Ooh, oh, wow. 
<laughs> but it did seem like they came around at times of sadness and stress and they're very comforting and I lost my grandmother my mother and my aunt within a few years of each other and this has been an exceptionally difficult year for me uh, health wise I was seriously ill um, just a lot of things happened and financially, uh, spiritually, I was just pretty much beaten. And I noticed sometime in August, there were three female cardinals in a peach tree that had actually died. I, it's my peach tree that I refused to cut down <laughs> outside my kitchen door. And the, the peach tree was symbolic for my mother and I because it grew by accident. I didn't plant it. It just kind of came up. Right. And we used to enjoy the peaches and, you know, get a little drunk on them. And, but I would see these three female cardinals, like, every evening from about 7, and, seven o'clock till it got dark. And they would stay in that tree and they would look into the kitchen. It's unusual to see female cardinals together. Maybe you might see two but never three. And every time a male cardinal would come by, they'd run him off. And um, I didn't think anything of it. I just liked them. I, you know, I enjoyed their company. And I was talking to a friend and she says, well, you know who that is, don't you? And I'm like, birds, <laughs> you know, because I have a lot of wild birds in my habitat, a lot of them. And um, I, I still didn't get it. And she said, that's your ancestors looking out for you. I, I'm not one to believe in things. Let me rephrase that. I wasn't one to believe in things, but I pretty much believe anything's possible. Yes. Right now. Um, it made perfect sense that it was the three women closest to me in life who are still here with me. And they still come around. I don't see them as much because uh, winter doesn't bother them. Um, but I do see them together. And every now and then, there's one in particular who um, is very boisterous and will make me pay attention and come to the door. And they're not afraid of me. I can go out there and there they are. I, I actually, I did a painting of the three of them, but I'm, I don't plan to exhibit it. Or it's, I may exhibit it one day, but I'm not going to sell it. You're going to keep um, that for yourself. Three female. You're going to keep that for yourself. Now, the, the female. So the yeah, female. Yeah. The female. Um, so are, they, are they bright red or are they more subdued? No. They're um, kind of a golden brown taupe with a tiny bit of red um, on their chest and back of their head. It, they have red highlights here and there, but they're not anything like the, the male cardinal, which is just like, bam. You know, male birds are like that period. They, oh, okay. They're much more flamboyant. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, they're very gaudy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, 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 and that's why he's there. I guess you have so many, the, the way you use the colors in the quilt, contrasting with the you know, their, their, their uh, shirts, their, their blouses, their hair. It's just nice piece. Nice, nice work. And um, everything has them. And the dishes in that picture were also um, symbolic of some dishes I found once in a thrift store. Um, they were like dirt cheap, like a nickel a piece, but they were just so beautiful. And I always wondered... Where did they come from? What was the story behind them? And how did they get there? And that's what those are. And this was also done with India ink. Okay. They should, they should give me free ink from now on because I'm plugging them mercilessly. Oh, India ink is giving you free ink? <laughs> they should, I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, and it's one particular company I get them from. And yeah, I, I plug it because I'm, I'm just so in love with the medium. 
Right. Yeah, so I really like it. It gives you that vibrant color, right? Yes. And, and, and I can do more detail because it is ink and not paint. I can use a brush. I can use a pen. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, I do a lot of finger painting. I can't do it with any ink too much because it dries too quick. I mean, almost, you know, very, very quick. Mm -hmm. And it's not a forgiving medium by any means, but folk artists, we tend to, we don't care if we're forgiven or not. You don't care if you're what? Forgiven or not. Okay. That's nice work. All right, so that, that's about all the pieces we have to show for the show. We're back to Stacey yeah. stories at the Gay Mom Museum. Give us that information again, please, Stacey. Uh, the Janice Mason Art Museum in Cadiz, Kentucky. It's about 30 minutes north of Clarksville, Tennessee, and a few minutes south of Paducah, Kentucky, uh, hour and a half north, northwest of Nashville. And it opens January 5th. This January. Hello. Can you say that again? That's a joke. <laughs> I said I'm keeping all fingers, toes, and other appendages crossed. And 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 why is that? Because what's so tough? That's a, just for luck, for luck. I'm I'm very nervous about it. I'm very excited. I'm ex I'm extremely humbled by it all. I mean, I'm just. I mean, I've never, two, if you told me two years ago that I would even be talking to you or anything or that I'd have website, anything from my art, I would just be blown away. I never dreamed I would see the word artist legitimately behind my name. And mm -hmm. that well, you, 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 is just a blessing. You, you, you're at a situation where many people want to be. You're in a museum. Yes. And so tell us a beautiful little museum, really little. Yeah. I'm sorry. Tell us those dates again, please. January 15th, you said? January 5th through February 25th. Okay. The reception is January 14th. Oh, okay. And then all, and you have, the, you have 74 paintings. Is that what you have down there? 70. 70. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, that's what we have. Affordably priced. <laughs> Excuse me? I said affordably priced. They will Very be good. for sale. Oh, they, they, these, of course, these are museum quality works, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> that's right. They have to be because they're, they're in a the museum. <laughs> I mean, that's what they asked for. They asked for what I had. And, um, Again, I, I, I'm always freaked out when people say things like that because I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just shocked when people think of my art as, I, I can't even put it to words. You know, I, I'm, I'm very humbled by this. And uh, I, I, I just hope I can do a good show and I think I will. And, and one of the reasons they selected me to do it this time of year was because of the dark winter months. And uh, they thought the colors that I use would be uplifting for visitors when they come to see it. And I, that's I why uh, the name of the show. Is, yeah. What's, what's the name of the show? Color Storm. Color Storm? Correct, yes. All right. Okay. Anything else you want to share with us about your work or your museum um, show coming up? No, I'm. I'm just happy and, and grateful that you've allowed me to do this, share this with you, and um, um, I, I'm. I'm. So, I'm just lost for words. I'm. 
ecstatic, giddy, and um, ready for this art to get out of my living room. It's in oh. the way. All right. <laughs> it's like, okay, I so mean, with that, with that like Sanford and Sons Art Gallery. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jordan. again, this is Bill Jordan here with Art with Bill. This segment has been sponsored by the Academy of Composition. Go there to the Academy of Composition.com, speak with Don Victor to have all your composition needs addressed. As Da Vinci said, 80% of his work was composition, 20% was just painting. All right, so again, if you're a uh, uh, a sculptor, a painter, or candlestick maker, come tie in once again on other shows with Candid Art with Bill. You'll be really happy you did because people buy from people they know. And what better way for people to know you by your, than by your candid story? With that in mind, I have to say is thank you, Stacy. Best of luck, and we'll see you, talk to you soon. Peace out. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs>